I think it's safe to say that these last 18 months or so, people's well-being and mental health has certainly been affected. Now, everything from running a business that has been devastated by the pandemic, the challenges of family life and looking after loved ones that you can't see because of restrictions. To talk more about this subject, I am speaking with Sahara Rose DeVore, who is a wellness travel coach. And we'll be discussing the rise in wellness tours that have happened over the last 18 months. Well, people are looking for something different. They are looking for something to help with their mental well-being. So we discuss everything from the types of products that they are looking for, why you should maybe consider looking into the wellness side of travel, and how it is affecting people's mental health. So welcome to the Digital Tourism Show, episode 261. <laughs> Hi, Chris. Thank you so much for having me. No, I, I'm really looking forward to today. You know, um, I think with uh, with all that's going on in the world, you know, wellness, mental health, all these sort of aspects have really came to the fore. And if, if anything, it's such a hot topic just now. So it's, I'm really looking forward to what we what we dig up today in our, in our chat. But then, <laughs> but before we begin, do you want to give a little bit of a more background about yourself and how you how you how did you get into the travel space in the first place? Yeah, thank you. Uh, well, I studied hospital. I was never someone who knew what career path I wanted to take. I was, uh, so I, I hopped around different um, topics in college and I transferred schools one time and I was like, oh, there's a tourism program. So I joined it and I fell in love with the, the topics, the fields. So I graduated with a degree in hospitality and tourism management over a decade ago in 2010. And at that time, I was. I was 22. I wanted to travel and all the travel jobs out there didn't really align with how much I wanted to be able to go see the world. So I took a very unconventional route. I bought a one-way ticket to Ireland. I packed a backpack and I started traveling. And with the initial intent to travel for just about a month and a half around Europe, I fell in love with travel and I wound up traveling on and off for the next decade. So over 84 countries alone. And I then realized that, you know, despite the rise in technology and social media and changes in careers that were possible from influencers to bloggers to writers to travel agents, still nothing really aligned with me. So about four years ago, I decided to take my own career path in my own hands. And I started two businesses uh, within the travel industry that really aligned with myself. And uh, time has flown by and it's about four years later and I get to talk to amazing people like yourself. <laughs> wow. What was it like getting a one-way ticket? Is that not a bit scary? Was it, was it, <laughs> or were you really looking forward to that adventure you had ahead of you? <laughs> I, I honestly don't know where my wanderlust came from. I come, I'm an only child to a single mom. We didn't grow up with much money at all. And uh, our family didn't travel very much. So other than long road trips down to Mexico to visit my, my grandmother's family. But I, I, I was really inspired by the foreign exchange students in a couple of my international tourism courses in my third and fourth year of university. And when I got to hear how many places they had been able to visit, um, not realizing how simple it is when you're in Europe to travel to from country to country, because here in this, it's quite big uh, and to get around and we're not connected to anything other than Canada and Mexico. But I really was in awe and I pr made a promise to myself that I'm going to figure out how I can do that. And um, I, as an only child, I, I've never had the urge to need someone with me. So that was never a scary thing. And I think my burning desire to go see the world was a lot greater than any fears that I had. Um, and I met so many amazing people traveling and that was one of something I always looked forward to. No, I wish I wish I had that sort of bug when I was a kid. You no, know, I, I feel as if I've missed out a lot by not traveling the world. You no, know, I don't get me wrong. No, my my parents weren't that well off either. But my my father actually came from Madeira, so you know, he I've got Portu I have family in Portugal, so um, so we do we did visit there every so often. But it was it was almost that they had to 
you know, scrape every penny to try and get across and stuff like that and everything else. So going to travelling to different countries wasn't wasn't high in the list. So, but I wish I, when I earned my my first wage packet, I did I just I did just that, but no, I didn't. So <laughs> I stayed stayed in Glasgow. So, um, so I do envy you on that side of things. But um, but no, today we're we're obviously going to be talking about um, wellness. And you know, it's, I think it's a, it's, a, it's a no-brainer that mental health has been a hot topic during the whole COVID pandemic. And you no, know, I've you know, I've seen it firsthand how it affects someone's life, whether it's been myself or even my eleven-year-old daughter. And I've seen how she's been affected by it. My um, even my son, who's five, you know, everyone's been affected by it in some sort of stretch, uh, some sort of state. Um, you know, even I've had low points during the whole what, eighteen months, as I say. So, and I'm sure many people listening and watching have. Um, because of this, have you have you seen a surge uh, in travellers looking for that something a little bit different that's that's going to realign them and maybe reset their thinking and help them with their mental health and and what sort of areas within the wellness travel have you seen the growth in because of the, cu- the current climate? Yeah, well, first of all, I I can definitely relate. Um, I've always struggled with. Um, mental health. And that's part of my story that I don't often talk about when it comes to why I started traveling, because there are many reasons why I started my journey, but I've always been a very anxious person. And um, when I graduated university, I was very unclear of my paths and I was in a really dark place and uh, decided just to travel and then didn't realize how healing travel was going to be for me. And that's one of the reasons why I fell in love with the the idea around wellness when it comes to travel, because as human beings, travel is innate in all of us. We all turn to travel for different reasons, unique reasons, personal reasons, whether it is to find connection with people, to find solitude, to self-reflect. It's different for all of us. And pre 2020, we all traveled for these reasons, but we didn't often talk about that. Just like how I naturally gravitate towards, you know, why I was unhappy with the the jobs in the travel industry, which is, is true. But a bigger reason was because I was not in a good place and I just needed to get away. I and naturally we have a flight or flight flight or fight. And I'm always, my personality is naturally a flight. I I get away from situations. So travel allowed me to physically get away from things, which is not obviously always healing or the right thing to do, but travel was healing for me. And so pre-2020, when people talked about going on a vacation or traveling, it often was the pretty picture around it. You know, I need relaxation and I'm going to sip a pina colada on a beach, which is granted you might do that. And that is great to do. It's fun uh, and relaxing, but what's the underlying purpose for why people truly travel? And as bad as all of 2020, 2020 was on us as humans, on our economy, on industries, all industries, including the hospitality and tourism industries, uh, it shined a lot of light on areas that were slowly getting attention pre pandemic and kind of catapulted these concepts like well being to the forefront, um, which is a positive. Uh, I, like I mentioned to you, I was in London right at the very beginning of the pandemic, so f- the end of February, and I was at the business travel show for their in their wellness uh, row. They opened up a wellness room uh, with some friends of mine I met through the business travel well-being community. And even though the pandemic was just at the beginning, there wasn't anything really talked about it yet. So for the pr- about two years prior to that, I had been studying and learning and connecting with different tourism companies, DMOs, TMCs, hotels, everything to see what are they doing when it comes to wellness, Uh, in particular, the business traveler industry. Uh, As a wellness travel coach, I specialize in business travel and corporate wellness. So in particular, the business travel industry. And I found a pattern that wellness to them was mostly diet, sleep and exercise. So, you know, how comfy are the beds? Um, are there healthier meal options? Do they have a meditation app or is the gym 24 hours for them to access? And I said, when it comes to travel, 
there's so much more that you get out of a healing experience than, than that. Granted, I know it's for business travel. Time is limited, but can we tap into any of that? And, uh, of course, you know, things are talked about or companies think about initiatives or talk about what they want to do, but action doesn't really happen. Little did we know it would take a pandemic for companies to wake mm. up um, and realize how important travel is for our overall well-being. Um, so nowadays, yes, there, it's really interesting. It's really exciting. Uh, I'm involved with a lot of things ranging from the business travel well-being community. I'm in the risk management. So fields of things from duty of care, risk management, just wellness in general, meetings and events, hotels are all expanding and redefining what wellness means for their employees, for their consumers, their visitors, and their business travelers. So it's it's really exciting to see um, where things are coming, what's coming out of all of this, and all mm. the creative opportunities that have come about. Yeah, for sure. And, and I appreciate you opening up there. It's um, sort of I, I was the same when I was when I was younger. I, I was I was quite an anxious person. That is, my brain, even today, you know, it never truly switches off. You no, know, maybe it's because I'm I've always been a designer or a marketer or whatever. But I, I'm always thinking about designing or creating or doing something. And if I if I do have the opportunity to sit still, it's, it just doesn't <laughs> it doesn't work for me. If you know, I always have to be doing something. And I was always quite anxious. And even back back you no know, years ago, I know not not being able to speak in front of crowds and stuff like that. And but now I'm grown out of that because of what I've had to do in the industry and everything else and stuff like that. And it's just sort of teaching myself and force myself. But um but yeah, no, every now and again you still get those moments of you no know, anxiousness and, and things and stuff like that. Even 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 today. But um you sort of work your way through it in any way you can. And I think that's why um I know we're going off topic here slightly, but I think that's why I love movies so much because it's the only time I actually truly if I if I do have a chance of switching off, it's the only time I truly switch off is when I'm actually sitting in front of a movie I want to enjoy and and, and it's, it's the escapism of being drawn into the story and everything else. And I think that's 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 sort of my escape uh, at this moment in time. So, um, but no, yeah, I really appreciate opening up. I'm the same with like TV shows. Like I mm. watch really silly reality TV shows, and as mindless as they are, it's a moment of escapism uh, for me. So I, I definitely can relate with all of that, especially as business owners. There's always so much to not only do for that, but you're, it's hard enough to shut your mind off as it is, as a, a human being, but then put on top of that your work and your businesses, which obviously mm. we love what we do, but it can be a lot sometimes, right? Yeah, it's 24-7. <laughs> That's for sure. <laughs> you never truly, really, like I say. Um, but obviously, wellness side of things has, has grown massively. Um, and you know, for those who are listening or watching at this moment in time, whether they are a tour operator or whether they're in a hotel chain or whatever it would be and they don't offer a wellness type product at this moment in time where where would you start no no how would you get into into this side of things to to help which obviously the, the upcoming trend that's, that's happening just now with with wellness tours yeah uh i've talked to several chamber of commerces and tourism boards um within 2021 who are looking to market their destination, their city in a way that centers around wellness. Um, so if you're a travel agent, a tour operator, or a DMO, really tap into whatever region, destination area that you focus in um, or that you live in and tap into what natural resources come about. What, what do you have to offer? Um, I spoke with the someone from the Tourism Board of Argentina a few months back, and she was talking about how they're really working on getting the uh, the awareness that they have hot springs around. When we think of hot springs, our first thing comes to probably Iceland, right? The Blue Lagoon. Mm. Um, it's very well marketed. Um, and but there's so many places around the world that have such beautiful healing natural resources that ha that people don't know about and it's really up to those dmos those the tour operators those who specialize in those areas or send people there to really tap into what is the purpose of people visiting these places so really identifying and speaking directly to your ideal audience so if you're a tour operator a um a TMC, a travel agent, 
who is your ideal market? What is it that they want? Other than obviously a beautiful vacation to get away, why do they really want to go? What tap into what has happened during 2020? Where are they mentally? Where are they physically? Travel is healing mentally, uh, physically, spiritually, emotionally. These are new areas. The whole concept of transformative travel is really skyrocketed. And even though it seems like a trendy word or a buzzword, it's really a foundation of what travel has always been for us, but it's just now being talked about in the shine a light on these meaningful, transformative, purposeful experiences, the underlying truth of why we actually go and travel. So being able to speak directly to the wants, needs, problems, desires, uh, in the wellness side of things of what your ideal client wants, then being able to work with or choose destinations that suit these um, these needs. So whether it's natural saunas, um, hot springs, just being in nature, hikes, uh, being around animals, bodies of water. There's so much research out there, art, especially now articles coming out about the benefits of blue spaces. So being near bodies of water, that's always been really healing to me. Uh, granted, I'm an Aquarius, but being by whether it's a lake, a pond, an ocean, um, water is really healing to me. And there's a lot of science behind why that is. So educating yourself on these different elements of the healing factors of travel to be able to market that. Because as travelers, just regular consumers, they're not aware of this. They just need have this urge. They need to get away for their own purposes, but they don't always verbalize what that is and why. So really tapping into that and pulling it from them and so that you can sculpt these experiences that is truly healing of what they need. Those are the definitions of transformative experiences. That's what people need to heal after all the trauma we've gone through in 2020. Yeah, it's, it's really interesting, though, when, you know, some of the things that you're mentioning, when, I, you know, when a lot of people think wellness, and I have to admit, you know, years ago, this, I thought the same thing. When you think wellness tours, you automatically think, yoga or no no forest bathing or something like that whereas no you're saying it just just being able to travel and going to a a a place near a body of water or going into a a, a, an actual forest or whatever it doesn't need to be something specific as yoga for example it can be other things on top of that as well yeah we often well the wellness tourism industry as you probably know was built on the spa industry Mm. so when people initially think of wellness tourism or wellness travel, they think of spas and destinations, hotels that have beautiful spas. And then the wellness industry in general is a lot of meditation, yoga, apps, stuff like that. But when we think of the, the roots of what healing and wellness really is, it's that human, it's everything that we've been stripped of for the past over a year, right? Human connection is really healing to us. Being outdoors, fresh air, nature, animals is really healing to us as human beings. Um, And these are all elements that travel has always provided us with, but we often took for granted or didn't acknowledge that that's what they gave us, but that's changing now. So being able to trickle that into your marketing um, and your business is going to be really beneficial. Um, obviously there's still restrictions and barriers around a lot of whether it's as, uh, you know, big as no borders up still, but, or physical distance or a lot of fears that people still have. Uh, but things like solo travel has, that took off during Mm -hmm. 2020 allowed people still to be outdoors. I was reading an article on how, so uh, a company who, uh, there was some like water sport company and they're, they never had this demographic before, but solo kayakers just like sky rise because, you know, it allowed them to be in a safe distance, allowed them to be outdoors and active. Um, so yeah, we saw different changes, but really it's up to you as a business owner to identify what your ideal client really needs, um, in order to, cause healing, it looks different for all of us. Um, and every place can provide something, something different for us too. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And it's not just travel. It's, um, seen the rise in terms of the, the mobile workplace as well, where people can just travel with, with a laptop, work anywhere in the world, you know, and, and in a sense, that's part of a wellness thing as well. Cause you're not stuck in an office. No, you're able to be whatever you want. Your, your office is basically the world that's in front of you. As long as you get an internet connection. <laughs> 
Yeah, well, that's something also that companies, that was something that I had been talking about for a few years now. As a, just an aimless backpacker for years before I started my businesses, um, I always say I traveled during a really prime time in the travel industry. I started with a flip phone that didn't turn on and a paper map. And then nowadays there's every app and resource under the sun to book a trip and make a and plan. Um, so I really got a hands-on experience in that. But along with the increase in internet and social media, there was the the travel bloggers, the digital nomad industry, um, the freelancers, this freedom-based lifestyle concept. And then with social media, being very active in travel-related Facebook groups or you know women in business Facebook groups, I would hear these concepts of quitting the nine to five, or I wanted to quit the nine to five, or I, I did leave the corporate job, no matter what my salary was, I left to travel the world was always the ending of their sentence. And I was like, well, mm. that's really interesting. Obviously, I knew why I love travel, but why is it that people... Tra- and it's not that they went backpacking for the next 10 years like I did, but why was travel the thing that they turned to? And then as I dove into that, I started to come across the... Because I I skipped the corporate route. I, I knew early on that was not for me. So I didn't get into the corporate world. But I started reading about the corporate world and I read about the the burnout epidemic and how people weren't using their vacation days. And I thought, mm-hmm. well, this is really odd that companies are not paying attention to what the workforce, where their mind's at, and uh, company culture not accepting vacation days or encouraging. Obviously, it's in, in country, but um, and then the pandemic, hit, and now we have so many companies that went fully remote or hybrid, once people are able to pick up and go, there's been studies showing that they're going to go. And how do you adjust to new environments? As not everyone's an avid traveler, changing locations and still being productive in the workplace sounds really fun, but it's not that easy. So there's concepts of travel coaches and culture coaches um, who are helping remote workers and companies really be able to adjust so they can still thrive in their own well-being and also in their work performance too. All these new er concepts and ideas are coming about. So I really encourage anyone in the audience, those with business owners, to really tap into what you're interested in, what's going on in the different industries, and cater to your ideal audience and clients in a way that touches exactly on what they need. moving forward because things are different yeah for sure for sure so for for any business owner um, listening just now you know if they were how would they start marketing a product like this no would they lean more towards marketing just the actual experience of it or would they actually lean more heavily towards the mental health aspects or maybe it's just a simple thing of being out with your family and friends because they've not been able to do that really for the last 18 months so how how would you market a product like this? Because sometimes the reason why I ask this is sometimes you can lean too heavily into the the mental health side of things, which may put some people off. But then you might want to go more into the experience. So how how would you find that balance? What would you what would you say you should maybe focus on? Yeah, well, the very first thing for business owners to do is to I I always say this to those in in my travel coach network is do your research. And what I mean by that is you only know what you as much as you know. There's so much more information when it comes to, especially the wellness side of travel, anything wellness related, if you're not a, a health professional or a wellness professional, uh, you need to figure out where this information is coming from. So studying, learning, reading articles, paying attention to webinars, there's tons of information out there, great resources that shows the actual science behind the mental, physiological, spiritual, emotional wellness benefits of travel. One you, once you can get a grasp of that, then you can, then you need to really understand who your ideal audience is. What are they struggling with? What do they need? What do they want? What kind of outcome are they looking for? What kind of experience when they return home? What is it that they want? Um, and integrating that in how the message you put out there. Because as when consumers come to seek a travel expert, to go on a vacation or a trip, whether it's with their family, solo, a group, an event, or whatnot, 
we're not, they're not all avid travelers. They just know what's inside, but they can't vocalize. Mm -hmm. And no longer are, is it important about the itinerary uh, and the hard facts of uh, a trip, right? I mean, when you go, how you get there, that's all the logistics of it will get figured out. It's the underlying why do they want to get away? So as the expert, the business owner, you have to be able to understand the message you're getting across to tap into these different areas. And naturally, your audience is going to tell you, yes, this is what I resonated with. This is what hit me. This is what I want. Um, And then you can then sculpt an experience for them or guide them in the right direction that is going to ultimately, because everyone is different as human beings. We all are different. A wellness experience for one person, whether they do the exact same thing as the person next to them, it's going to be a different outcome or a different time frame than the next. So really, I, I talk about this concept of hyper-personalization. You would see in the travel industry, personalized experience or customized experience experiences for years, right? But what does that really mean? It's not about what restaurant you choose to eat, your favorite cuisine. That's not that's not personalized anymore. Really, what does that human being need? But it's up to you as a business owner to identify what it is you want to help with. Just because you know travel is healing mentally does not mean that that's something that you have to talk about in your business if that's not something that naturally aligns with you and how you want to help people. It's completely up to you, but I would really just start with people paying attention to the different conversations of what's going on in the industry and pay attention to different online forums of why people are saying they need to get away. What is it? Whether it's moms who need time for themselves, whether it's remote workers working from one office place for the past year, Everyone wants something different. So identifying who your target audience first is also really important. Yeah, I love that fact. You know, that, no, hyper personalization, that's, no, it's, it's the way forward for travel. No, not, not having something that's highly you know, curated or got an itinerary or anything like that. You turn up and whatever happens, happens. Like you think, you know, one of our clients, Freshline, who do, who do a lot of um, motorcycle tours, so they have a start, they, they know where the destination that they'll arrive in. They know the final point of that destination, but whatever happens in between, there is no itinerary, there is nothing. It's just the adventure of doing it and being on a bike and going out. And whoever you come across, whether it's a local where you know, there's no plans of where you're going to eat or anything like that, it's just going out and having an adventure. And it's 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 becoming more and more popular that type of that type of product. So, yeah, uh, I always believed in the empowerment side of travel. Mm-hmm. Uh, which is one of the reasons why I was becoming a travel agent. I mean, other than my anxiety as well, like being responsible for the flight or an itinerary for someone um, didn't align with me. But um, I always enjoyed empowering people to be able to sculpt these experiences for themselves as well. And that's things like spontaneity, going off the beaten path, being open-minded. Because as a traveler myself, I realized, you know, when I did have a strict itinerary, there are times that I wish that I didn't, um, or it can cause more stress, or it limited, you know, how much time I was able to spend with the new friends I just made, or the destination wh- that I really didn't know I would love so much. Now I had to go on to the next place. So mm-hmm. there's people want these types of experiences, but just don't know how to go about it. So being able to empower your consumers as well is um, something that um, business owners should tap into as well. Yeah. So where's Sahara now? So if if, if you had to help, um, if you had to choose or pick one thing to help with your own mental health, no, would that still be travel? Would it be more maybe fitness or just socializing with friends? Where, where, where is your happy place at this moment in time? Yeah, well, there's so many different because I turn as someone who's always struggled with uh, anxiety, I've had to learn different coping mechanisms. And although travel was my outlet for so long as a business owner, it's not easy to travel and run a business like I used to travel. (laughs) Um, So now I travel mostly just for business. Um, But my, my happy place is really just spending time with my dog. Animals are really healing to me as well. Um, And just having quality time with, um, with my boyfriend, we, 
2020, you know, sheltered us from being around friends and family and outdoors and events and stuff like that. So just being able to have that social aspect, which is also really important to have a balance when you run businesses as well. To not always, I'm, I've been guilty of being fully stuck in front of my computer all the time because I absolutely love what I, both of my businesses, but it's also um, healthy for you to be social as well. <laughs> <laughs> well, definitely. I'll have to be I'm guilty of that. No, it's um, I've now got to the stage where um, when I went away um, to St. Andrews just a couple of weeks back, um, I did have my laptop with me, but I only opened it once, which was unheard of for me. No, it's, I, I had to force myself every time I, I felt myself walking towards the laptop. I was like, no, nope, stay away. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I have to have a break. Um, but yeah, it's, it's, it's that whole thing of trying to switch off when you're a business owner. It's, it's very, very hard. It really is. And, and yeah. as they say, you know, running a business is, is, a, is a lonely experience. You no, know, it's why I have a business coach to help me along with things. You no, know, unless unless you run a business yourself, talking to someone who is maybe an employee or stuff like that, they just don't quite get it. So it's a, such an alone experience, and it's good to having chats with other one other people who do run their own business just to bounce off ideas or just to have a rant at or whatever. You no, know, whatever it helps you so along that journey. So. Yeah, absolutely. I've all I always preach the importance of mentors, mentors and coaches. Uh, it mm -hmm. is what allowed me to kind of pave paths into areas that were really new, um, and also do it alone, and also at such a quick pace as my businesses grew. It's because I always sought mentors, um, and for a wide range of things, including, you know, the mental aspect of it. How do you even deal with this? How do you find balance? How do you respond to negativity? How all of that is, we all go through it. Mm -hmm. But just like what I learned when I was traveling solo, despite being able to figure things out on my own, because I did a lot, you don't have to do everything on your own. Asking for help is really important in all aspects of your life, whether it's business and personal. And there's no shame that can come to it. I've always been someone who's, I was always timid to ask for help because I'm just, I've just been so independent for so long and, you know, working on my own and making money and living and just being able to support myself for so long and then traveling the world alone. I am cap I know I'm capable of it, but it's also really healthy and easier to to ask for help and so when i started learning that from mentors i just kept on and now i love to bring my mentors into those that i coach in my network because it's just not only the inspiring it's just nice to hear from people who have been there and done that or had something worse um to give you a little bit of boost of confidence and um and help with that no for sure no it's um no having a no, when you think about the, the, the best sports people in the world, they all have coaches. So why, if you want to be the best you can be in a business, no, why wouldn't you have a business coach? No, it's, there, is, there is no different. No, and I, I was the same when I was uh, back in the day. No, I, I felt that if you asked for help and I always like to do things myself. No, everything, I left school when I was 16. Everything I have been through my whole 26 years of, of being in this industry has, has all been self-taught. And I think that's part of the reason why no, I found it hard to ask for help because you felt as if you were failing in, in some sort of way. Yeah. But then when I did go for a business coach, and, and, and went down that route you know, probably, probably close to 10 years ago now um, it was the best decision I've ever made um, and it's and it's made me a better business person made me a better um, better, you know, better towards my employees and everything else better husband better everything just because I'm, I'm planning things better and having better, more time to do things and everything else and it, it just makes such a big difference and I urge anyone who runs a business to have some sort of coach to help them along the way I really do Absolutely. And, and for so many different things too, there's coaches, whether it's like the logistics of business, um, but also just the emotional and mental aspect of it too, just being able to, to deal with, um, you know, work through and manage that. But yeah, I totally agree with you. It, it's when people ask me all the time, like, how were you able to grow your business? I was like, I got help. <laughs> like, not only just like freelancers or, or, you know, people that helped me with like content and stuff, but just finding mentors who I admire and finding people in the industry that, you know, you can talk to and, and hear how they went about. I've hired advisors, everything like help me. <laughs> I need it. <laughs> well, for sure. So if anybody wanted to pick your brains about, you no, know, wanting to know more about wellness tours or more, know about your, more about your business or want to get in touch, what's the best ways of, of doing that? How to get in touch with you? 
Yeah, well, there's a couple different ways. So um, I run the Travel Coach Network. So you can always find me on either the travelcoachnetwork.com or Instagram, the Travel Coach Network. Um, I'm on LinkedIn. If anyone wants to connect on LinkedIn, it's Tara Rose DeBoer. Um, and then as a wellness business, my wellness travel coaching business is harrosetravels.com, but um, any of those sources. So same thing with Sarah Rose, the travel coach on Instagram um, and same thing on Gmail. There's many ways to get in, in touch or uh, to find me. And I'm always happy to answer questions or if anyone thought of anything after they absorbed this, this, um, this chat here or thing at all. Yeah, excellent, excellent. Well, I don't actually see any questions, so I, I, I take that as a good thing that everyone enjoyed the chat. I hope if anybody does have any have any questions, well, please put it up in the chat. And we'll, we'll ask Sahara. But uh, if not, um, Sahara, I found I found this fascinating. You know, it's it's a it's a subject that because of you know, with my daughter and everything else, it's very close to my heart about wellness and everything else, and it's something I'm I'm certainly going to be be more mindful of. Um, and trying to do more things that's going to help with mental health, help with wellness with my own family and myself and everything else. And I think the last 18 months has really hit home how how important it is to, to not only just look after yourself, but then the whole socialising things of people that you've missed. No, I, 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 I'm I no ashamed of saying this. I remember when it was a, you know, a couple of months back, you know, the first time I was actually able to give my my one of my best friends, a big, big bear hug. Uh, and it just, it just felt great because <laughs> you've not been able to do that for 18 months. Uh, just simple things just helps you. No, it really does. And it's, um, I'm certainly going to be a lot more mindful of it as well. Yeah. The physical touch is really important and having, you know, it's obviously nice to see people over the computer versus nothing at all, but just being in person um, with people is, is, really helpful for us. So um, I really encourage people to really identify what it is that they are missing and tapping into like what, why they're feeling that way. And then, you know, figure out a way to, to help that even if it's just simply reaching out to someone and just talking, um, you know, it's, there's no shame in it all and seeing a therapist, like I, I would call my therapist tomorrow, you know, it's, there's so, and that's something I wish I had done much sooner in my life mm -hmm. too. Um, is just reaching out for like that mental health aspect as well outside of outside of business. Um, but and getting involved, talking to people, opening conversations and making it normal because it is we all struggle with something in our lives. And that's OK. Yep. We're all human beings. And, you know, last year it took such a toll with isolation and everything that we've gone through increased stress, increased anxiety, finances, loss of jobs. Uh, away from family members, friends, and then people just, you know, having really traumatic experiences throughout that. Um, I lost my grandmother during um, 2020, not from COVID, but during it. So mm -hmm. never was able to visit, see anyone, anything. It's just, it's crazy. So um, wow. luckily I met my boyfriend right at the beginning of it. So I was able to spend time with someone um, during it. But had I not, I had no idea what I, how I would be mentally right now with everything, especially dealing with our working throughout so much. I just dove into work, but have, it's important to have someone there with you, you know, to, to talk to and take a break with and, and stuff like that. So spend mm -hmm. time with. But yeah, so I, there's just, no one should ever, ever feel ashamed of anything. And if you're not sure what kind of help you need, like ask someone, you know, just start getting it out in some way, yeah. journaling or something. It's just, it's no good to have it within. And there's no shame in saying uh, you're having an off day or anything like that. Like even as business owners, if you're having an off day, acknowledge that and give yourself time off. That's okay. Like we, we carry so much guilt on ourselves for especially as business owners that we have to be connected. We have to do this. We have to show up for the day. If you personally don't need that, you're obviously not going to show up in a very effective way. So give your time yourself the time that you need, um, especially to set Definitely. yourself up for success moving forward. Yeah. And if you happen to be a business owner that has a great team behind you, that can really help. No, it's, and I've actually had, oh, I'm lucky that the team I have behind me is fantastic. Yeah. And, and yeah, I've even been on a few, go meet calls with them they've, they've all just went chris you need a holiday go <laughs> get away from the computer or do something and it's just like you no know, they're, they're it's, it's just looking after each other and if you do look after each other then everything else will take care of itself so um, it's good. yeah building a support to yourself in every aspect in your business in your personal life um and whether i i've been really really lucky 
and grateful. I don't know what the word is. Blessed. I'm not sure, but the, my travel coach network, it's like we're family and it's like people, we, as if we've known each other for a long time and they're just, I, many of them have worked for me as well. So also having that support and to take some of my workload off the table for me too, but just having a support system in any way, shape or form can really help you. Um, is really necessary. It's not even an option. Just do it <laughs> if you need mm-hmm. it. Yeah. Well, thanks for the comment from uh, Nicola Hunter page. I'll show this on screen. Thanks for the chat. I think travel is something that people didn't consciously realize was so important to their mental health, myself included, which is why staycations have become so popular now and couldn't agree more. You know, people are just realizing that you know, they'll be staying at the same four walls for so long that they, they just have to escape. And it's, it just shows you how how important travel is to, the, to a human being, really. Yeah, the changes. Travel is about also changing in sceneries. And that doesn't mean you have to get on a plane and go somewhere. Airbnbs, I was reading an article, Airbnbs throughout 2020 did so well with Mm. domestic and local travel. And it's as simple as just changing your environment. Like you said, like staring at the same four walls for so long or being in the same place, just having a new scenery. Just uh, this weekend, Um, I'm going to a lake nearby in my home state here of Wisconsin that I've never been to, Lake Geneva. And I'm excited for that. It's in my same state, but it's going to be a beautiful lake. I get to stay in a hotel. So just as simple things like that can really change your mindset as well and give you a little boost of um, happiness. Yeah, definitely. That's exactly what I did two weeks ago. (laughs) Although it it was literally only an hour and a half down the road, it was... No, it was it was just that different scenery, and it was a great scenery. Yeah. It was just a beautiful place to be in. So, but, yeah, um, but no, Sahara, I can't, I can't thank you enough. No, it's been a great oh, chat. Um, I've I've learned a lot myself, and hopefully those listening and watching have uh, have learned and maybe been inspired to try and uh, either do more of from for themselves or or try to create products for the businesses that, that, that have that sort of wellness and mental health sort of. Uh, side of things um, more to the fore so um, I think hopefully it will open up a few people's eyes yeah oh, I forgot to mention I did a recent collaboration with the health tourism worldwide um, organization um, if you haven't seen check it out they just came out with a report in the beginning of 2021 and they talk a lot about these new what they call travel triggers of like underlying reasons why people travel but a lot of statistics around different countries and what they offer. So everything of like from medical tourism to natural hot springs, saunas, it's really, I learned a lot from it. So I would definitely check out the health tourism worldwide um, website too. Excellent. I'll make sure I'll put that in the show notes when we post up the the video in the podcast. Excellent. That'll be good. Yeah, yeah, definitely. I can send you the link. Please do. Please do. Well, thanks again. Thanks for your time. And um, no, hopefully someday we can actually meet in person and have a good chat and <laughs> do that. So no, if your boyfriend's coming over to Scotland to play golf and you never know, but no, we might, might, might have a chance of meeting up. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. I don't think I'm invited to play golf with them. So I'm, I'll be free to... <laughs> plenty of spas over here. No, Scotland's a beautiful place for spas and everything else. So <laughs> I'm just excited to see the greenery in Scotland. That's going to be exciting. So beautiful there. Yeah, especially now it's it's it's, it's been beautiful for the past few weeks. So, um, but no, thanks again, and uh, hopefully we'll have a chat soon. Wonderful. Well, thank you so much for having me. I look forward to continuing our our talk sometime soon. So, thank you again. Thank you so much. 